Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Hey, hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glantz, back with another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. I'm recording this at like 8 p.m. on a Thursday night, and I have to tell you, things around here are super, super goofy. I got like this surge of energy around 6 p.m., and I was like, we are going to take care of business around here. Adam's been gone for work. He just got back this morning on a red eye flight. So he's super tired and I'm super in go, 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 go mode. <laughs> so I literally was like, okay, we are going to clean up this apartment. We had like a bunch of packages and things to return and things to open and like all of this stuff. I was like, we're going to, we're going to do it all. Well, it went south very quickly. I ordered like, I don't know, no joke, 10 packages from online shopping in the past couple of weeks just because I'm sick of going to stores. I never have time to like actually take the subway, go to Manhattan and go shopping. So I just did like a bunch of online shopping for the fall and the winter and I got all the packages. There was actually 10 of them and I tried everything on. I'd say out of 10 packages of like maybe let's say like 45 things, let's say, okay, I'm keeping two things too. But to repackage everything and make sure they went in the right package with the right labels and brought them downstairs so that they can be picked up was a test for our marriage. I'm the kind of person that's like, when there's a challenge like that, I'm like, we got to keep things organized. We got to get going. And Adam is a little bit different in his work style. So I was really mean and I felt really bad. I actually apologized on the spot because I was being really mean to him. And luckily, he is a very forgiving person, so he let it go. But then after that, I was opening up one of our closets because I wanted to write a thank you note to my friend. And when I opened the closet and got the thank you note out, I dropped a coffee mug all over the floor. It shattered everywhere. And the problem with the coffee mug situation is that I got that as a gift for Adam's brother. And we went to Montana. It says his name on it. It's like this really cute coffee mug. And I just broke it and shattered it. And then after that, we did a bunch of other chores around the house. And I feel really... I feel really accomplished. I feel like we did a lot. When you live in a 500 square foot apartment with just two closets and the rest of your apartment, everything out there is like out there for the world to see, you suddenly let things pile up and then you just get so tired of seeing the pile up that it takes one day, one night at like the worst time ever to actually do something about it. So we did something about it. I'd say we have like 75% left of stuff to do. But I think that's good for the night. I had an encounter yesterday that made me think about friendship. And I've been talking so much about friendship lately. And I, I didn't I don't mean to. I haven't meant to. It's just sort of been the theme of the month. It started with the friendship inventory, which I did an episode on a couple episodes, which is the art and the process of sitting down and just reviewing the relationships that you have with the people in your life. What could you do to be a better friend? Who do you want to be a better friend to? Who are you starting to see yourself slipping away from? And is that okay? Or do you want to do anything about it? Last week, I talked all about how I become more vulnerable as a friend. And when my best friend broke up with me, I used that, the pain of that experience and the heartbreak of that experience to figure out, okay, what could I do to improve who I am and how I treat other people? But this week, I took Goofy out for a walk yesterday, and it was just like a casual walk. I was FaceTiming my mom, and all of a sudden, there was this dog off leash, and Goofy was like, I have to play with this dog. So I took Goofy off the leash in the park, and the two of them went nuts, and I'm like FaceTiming my mom, and then I realized, you know what? I should probably not be so rude to the other dog's person. Like, I should talk to this girl. She's just standing there. She seemed really nice. So I got off the phone with my mom. I start talking to this woman. 
turns out we have so much in common when she's talking all I'm thinking about is like oh my god like I have the same exact stories to share for all of these things her dog is three years old we live like two streets down we just oh she canceled her pandemic wedding I had to cancel our pandemic wedding we just had like very similar parallel lives and that's sort of rare to meet someone where you're like wow this person seems awesome and I I want to see them again And we keep talking for probably 45 minutes and I'm like, okay, how do I close the deal? How do I get this person to be my friend? How do we exchange numbers? How do we make plans to get coffee? How do we do like a dog date for our dogs? I don't know. And I felt like in the moment I was the most awkward person ever. And it made me think about a skill that we all should have learned years ago in school, which is not only how to keep friends, but how to make friends. Because the art of actually starting a friendship is really hard and really awkward and not so easy. And in those situations like that, I freeze. I do everything wrong. And I thought about what I should have said to her. Should I have said to her, hey, you know, we have a lot in common. Would you want to get together again? But in my head, that sounded sort of desperate and awkward. And then I thought about saying, we should be Instagram friends. And then I thought, I don't really want her to see my Instagram because we don't really know each other. And if you see someone's Instagram, you start to think a thousand things about them, especially I feel like my Instagram. So I didn't say that. And time's passing. We're still talking and I can't figure out like what to say. So at one point, I literally, this is a true story. I blurted out to her. I'm like, oh my God, can we be best friends? I said it in like a joking sarcastic but also like underlying tone of truth and she was like she didn't say anything back she just sort of like awkwardly laughed and like changed the subject so I was like okay Jen that was not what we were supposed to do here eventually we both sort of realized like it's getting late we have to go and I'm like wow it was so awesome meeting you like I hope we can like see each other again I think I said something really awkward like that and she was like let's exchange numbers and I was like okay so she gives me her number I call her to like give her my number back not to like call her immediately and like chat it up with her and after I do that I get home and I think to myself oh my goodness like are we ever actually going to text are we going to meet up again like is this going to be a friendship I obviously really liked her and thought she was cool and thought we had a lot in common who knows what she thought of me and what is the next step to take And I was telling my mom about this and she was like, you should text her. You should ask her to meet up with you. You should like plan a time to go back to the park. And I just was like delaying doing that. And I just couldn't figure out how to do that. I didn't want to come off as desperate. You know me, I'm no friendship expert here. I'm the one that makes mistakes and gets broken up with and has after 34 years of her life recently become vulnerable to people who she's friends with. Like I'm not the expert friend here, but I figured like if I didn't text her first, then maybe she's getting a vibe from me that I don't like her. So yesterday I waited. I feel like I'm like dating this person, but I like waited two hours and I texted her like a joke about the dogs. I was like, oh, wow, Goofy is so tired. Like some some joke that like only a dog parent would care about and understand. And she wrote back eventually and was like, you made like a dog comment back and we left it at that. Will I text her to meet up? Maybe. Will she text me? Maybe. But I think the moral of the story is one of the things we all could benefit from. And I'm really serious about this. Like, I think everyone can benefit from having a script in their head of what they want to say when they meet somebody that they want to see again, whether it's a friend, whether it's an acquaintance, whether it's someone you meet at a networking event, whether it's somebody you meet and you want to date. Like, I think we go through life and we meet awesome people all of the time, but we don't know what to say to them. And sometimes we don't say anything and they don't say anything and we never, ever, ever see them again. But what if we had a script in our head that was as easy as saying, Hey, it was great to meet you. I'd love to keep in touch. Let's exchange numbers. Or, hey, it was great chatting. Let's be, let's be email friends. I don't know, whatever you want to say. But this is something that I was really thinking about ever since I met this person is like, I wish I was better at this. And the only way to get better at this is to know in advance what to say and to have something that doesn't feel awkward, isn't awkward, makes me feel comfortable saying so that in that moment, I could look at a person who I thought was cool and be like, hey, I think you're awesome. Like, let's stay friends. I don't know. But I think that's something that I personally want to work on. And if we could all have like pick up lines for new people who we want to be our friends, I think we'd make friends a little bit faster in this world and not be so scared.
Until next week, all my love, Jen Glant. Hey you, thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that you're not getting any younger podcasts on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen to. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives, for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.